Hey guys, it's Pelican here and welcome to my Max Sock Solo PvP build for the Flames of Ambition patch. This setup also works for small men and BGs and I'll also be going through some alternative sets you can use. I'll also be uh, focusing more on the CP this time due to the new CP changes and give my opinions on how to allocate your CP when uh, you haven't unlocked everything yet. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So firstly, I'll be going through my gear setup. This is Zero Deal Legal, no proc sets are used. I'm running 5-piece Crafty Elphic, 1-piece Swarm Mother, 1-piece Dormy, 2-piece Trainee, and 3-piece Ancient Grace. So the reason why I'm running so much Max Magicka is because uh, it's always important to stack Max Mag on the Max Sock due to your shield scaling off Max Magicka only. And also because uh, Max Magicka has dropped for max sock this patch the average build has lost about like 3k 3 or 4k max magicka and damage is seriously over the roof this patch everyone is dealing so much damage so it's more more important than ever to stack a uh, max magicka otherwise you're just going to die really really fast on the max sock so uh, for my enchantments i'm running all max mag on my on my armor pieces and I'm running all ma all magicka, sorry, all try recovery on my jewelry. On my front bar, I'm running sharpen trait and uh, double dot poisons. You can also choose to run in move poisons. I think they're pretty good. I'm no longer running shock because I think it's I think double dot poisons are just better after the minor vulnerability nerf. And on my back bar, I'm running a frost stuff with infused weapon damage. You can also choose to run a sword and board, but uh, you will trade off a lot of uh, damage because you are losing your ice staff light attacks as well as your infused enchantment proc for not as much defense. Like sword and board isn't really a huge difference in defense compared to ice staff, so I just recommend sticking to ice staff. Uh, you don't really need a rest though because we are not running any any skills from restoration stuff and we don't really need to either uh, for my trades I'm running 3 well fitted and 4 in pen I think you need like at least a few well fitted but I also think that in pen is very important this patch because there are quite a few nasty like crit focus builds out there like I think you can definitely survive with 7 well fitted because the additional dodge roll kind of makes up for the for the lack of impen. But if you're not sure what to do, a good a good setup to begin with is 4 impen and 3 well fitted and you can slowly adjust from there. And that is what I'm running right now. Uh, all arcane for the jewelry. So I'll be going through the alternatives now. So instead of 2-piece trainee and 3-piece ancient grace, you can choose to run uh, Well, I don't have it right now, but you can choose to run 5-piece ember plasm If you guys realize, uh, 3 try recovery glyphs is the same Gives the same recovery as the ember plasm 5-piece bonus So you can kind of swap it around But uh, if you are running ember plasm, then instead of atro stone, you have to run a major stone and you will still lose like about 2k max magicka once you once you equalize the the mag recovery but uh you you will be 300 spell damage higher but i, th I still think that the max magicka is more important so i'm sticking with the ancient grace plus trainee setup instead of ember plasm i used to run ember plasm but uh, i found that this setup is better doesn't have as much damage, but he has way more defense. And uh, one more thing, uh, you don't really need purple, ju sorry, gold jewelry. It's not a big difference from just having purple in this case, since you are not running infused or bloodthirsty. Uh, for BGs, I highly recommend taking out one one of these for for talk. Because talk is just infinite sustain. I will be running this if it wasn't for the for the restrictions. And if you are running talk, you don't you can just run spell damage. Or actually, you can run 
Okay, if you are running talk in a BG, you can run Mac recovery on this and then swap your Atro Stone out for out for mages for more max magicka. You will still be over sustaining because talk is very OP. And also if you are planning to run in a BG and use talk, I recommend using Ancient Grace weapons. Otherwise you will not be able to run your your talk in this setup. So get Ancient Grace weapons and then crafty outfit or training jewelry because Ancient Grace only exists in uh, in jewelry or weapon form. So you definitely need the weapon if you are planning on running talk. So I think that's all for the gear setup. Now I'll be moving on to the to the skill setup. So firstly, I'll be going through the front bar skills. The first skill is Boundless Storm. This is mainly for your defense and mobility, but the damage over time is also very important. Mainly, it's used to proc your crit surge, which is your main form of healing. And since a uh, crit chance is quite low this patch, I think we only have like a uh, thirty percent crit chance fully buffed, thirty to thirty five percent, depending on your CP. So having a constant Damage source to proc crit search is more important than ever. You can also use the damage over time aggressively. You can use it to pull night base out of stealth. And when I'm fighting other ranged players and even some melee players, I like to stay on top of them, like intentionally, even though I'm a ranged class, so I can use the I can use the damage over time to my advantage. Second skill is your crystal frex. This is your main burst ability. Try to fire it only when you're only when the proc is ready but you can even you can also use it uh, with hard casting you can use a combo like this works as well but uh, it's mainly used with the proc the third skill is crushing shock uh, this will be your main spammable there are two reasons i use this over over elemental weapon the first the first reason why I'm using this is because it can interrupt enemies. In open world, there are a lot of situations where you have to stop a rest but you're not close enough. So having a range interrupt is very helpful. And the second reason is because uh, it has a much higher chance of proccing your double dot poisons. Because Crushing Shock uh, hits the enemy three different times, it has pretty much tripled the chance of proccing your poison. Uh, elemental weapon has its advantage. Uh, it desyncs people a lot. It desyncs their HP very easily when combined with overload. And it's also better against dodge rulers because even if they dodge your elemental weapon, they're still not safe. You can still use it for your follow up attack. Uh, the next skill is Haunting Curse. This will be your second uh, main burst. Second, Yeah, your second main burst on top of. Crystal Frex, not much explanation needed, just uh, just time the explosion together with a frag if possible for the most effect. The last skill is Flame Clench, it's my crowd control ability. A lot of people ask me why I use uh, Flame Clench over Rune Cage, even though I don't have uh, even though I do not have Master Inferno equipped. I still prefer Flame Clench more because it does damage uh, all the time, unlike Rune Cage. So when I whenever I use Rune Cage, I feel like my damage is really low because I don't I like the I like the damage of Flame Clench. And another reason is also because uh, Flame Clench has a much faster animation than Rune Cage. I feel like Rune Cage is a bit slow, and uh, the CC always doesn't land in time. So that's why I prefer Flame Clench. But uh, if you want, you can definitely run Rune Cage instead. And for my ultimate, I'm using Overload, using the Power Overload Morph. Overload is definitely the best ultimate to use on Max Sword, no matter no matter what situation you are in, uh, except for large scale battles. But there are, this patch, there are a lot of alternatives. Uh, they are also very good for Max Sword. The first one is Dawnbreaker. Uh, Dawnbreaker is actually a pretty good ultimate right now. The damage is quite high. It's comparable to Curse or even Frex. So you can definitely try this instead. 
You can also try a uh, Storm Atro. Storm Atro is also a very good ultimate. You can use it defensively. You can just line of sight around the Atro and just hide behind it. And you can also use Meteor if you are running Rune Cage. Meteor is a very nice ultimate to pair with uh, unblockable CC like Rune Cage. And finally, you can even run. You can even run Soul Assault. Like I tried this ultimate just for fun and I realized it's actually very overpowered in the right scenario like if you're fighting a medium armor build like even in this setup with no master inferno the two tip of soul assault is almost 100k and the two tip per per tick of soul assault is almost the same as curse so it's almost like a it's kind of like a frag machine gun in a way it does a lot of damage like on the average uh, player, it does 5k a tick and it ticks every like 0.7 or 0.8 seconds. Very powerful in the right scenario, you can use it, it's quite fun to use as well. But if you want uh, the most solid ultimate, I'll go with Overload. Next, I'll be going through the back bar. The first skill is Dark Conversion. This is mainly for sustain, but it also makes for a good secondary heal. It's a pretty decent burst heal. Just try to cast it only when you have CC immunity up, otherwise it's going to cost you a lot if you get interrupted. The next skill is Ball of Lightning. This is probably one of the strongest uh, skills for 1vx in the game right now. It gives you a lot of mobility as well as defense and it, also can, it can also be used offensively. So the distance you gain after you streak will give you some protection against melee players. And the ball of lightning will defend against range attacks. So it's kind of like a two in one. You definitely will get like one second, one to two seconds of breathing space after you streak to recover yourself. It also removes uh, snare and immobilizers. So it's also very good for kiting zerks to a better location. And one thing to take note is that the ball of lightning only starts absorbing projectiles. They are, they are cast after it appears so you can still get hit by projectiles after you streak because they are already cast before a good way to counter that is just to roll during or after you cast the skill and uh, as I said it can be used offensively as well what I like to do usually is to is to ball of lightning and then immediately turn and attack because I know that I, I will have at least like a short time where I'm where I'm quite safe from attacks, so it gives me a small window to fight back, especially during like a high intensity 1vx situation. So it's a very good skill to use. Definitely recommend this over the streak morph, even though the streak morph is also very good, still think this is better. Next will be your damage shields. You have Harden, we are using two wards for open world and BG. Hardened Ward is the stronger one, so always cast this first before your Dampen Magic. Uh, not much else to say. Crit Surge is your main, main form of healing, passive healing, and it also gives you your, your major sorcery. And lastly, I'll be going through the ultimate. Uh, I'm using Temporal Guard. It's a very good passive, and it also the active is also quite good if it works. But if you don't have access to Temporal Guard, that's fine as well. You can always slot a different ultimate like, like Barrier for, for the for the mech recovery. Or you can also slot another mech sword ultimate. Like for example, if you're using Dawnbreaker front bar, you could slot Overload or Storm Metro back bar. You can also slot Storm Metro back bar and Overload front bar. Those are still very good combinations. Now I'll be going through everything else. For my attributes, I'm running all into mech. For my Mundus, I'm running the Atro. I can't run the Mage because uh, mech recovery isn't high enough on this setup. I'm using Sugar Skulls for my food. And I'm using three different potions. My main one is the Immove Pot that gives uh, Spell Crit. And when, when I run into situations where I need a lot of sustain to survive, I will swap over to to my tripods and if I run into people who stealth a lot I will stop to my immove pods so having three different potions uh, prepares me for all kinds of uh, situations and for my race I'm a high elf 
Still my favourite race for Maxog PvP. Spell Recharge is very underrated. The stem sustain is very good on the max sword and the uh, resist works when you are using dark conversion. And other than that, for my armor, I'm running 5 1 1, 5 light. Make sure to have your heavy piece as your chest piece to maximize your resistance. And I'm running 5 1 1 because you still need 5 light armor anyway to be able to use dampen magic. Without two shoes, you are very squishy open world. And I'm using 511 just to maximize the my max stats. Just remember to to allocate points into all the passives because uh, you no longer have five piece bonuses. And make sure to have points into agility. It might seem like a useless passive at first, but uh matter of fact, we actually have more weapon damage than than spell damage on this setup so that means that your ultimate will be scaling off your weapon damage and your max magicka instead of a spell damage so let me just demonstrate real quick so right now my negate 2 tip is 2006 and once i slot dawnbreaker which increases my weapon damage you can see that my negate does more damage now it uh it works for yeah it works for all ultimates all ultimates will scale off your your highest stats so don't ignore this passive and finally uh yeah do not put points into trifocus you don't want your blocks on your back bar to cause magicka <laughs> that will make it very hard to sustain and you don't really need the the passive anyway so i just don't put any points into this and uh, just remember to have all your other passives as well, all the relevant passives that you need. And that's all I'll be going through to the CP now. So for my CP, I'll be going through it in this way. First, I'll go through the slotted passives and their alternatives. And then I'll be giving a list of all the relevant non-slotted passives and rank them in order of importance based on my opinions so that uh, you guys will have a rough idea of uh, which passive to allocate first so let's start with the blue tree for the blue tree i'm running deadly aim arcane supremacy dualist rebuff and resilience this is in order of importance and there are two passives that i think are worth trying over the first one is fighting finesse if you feel like you don't really need the crit resist you're not struggling against crit builds this patch you can try starting more damage it also helps a bit with your crit healing or if you feel like you're struggling a lot with uh with aoe setups like for example necromancers which are very strong this patch you can try slotting unassailable instead and uh, i think these are the only two alternative passives worth considering so next up i'll, I'll go i'll give the okay here's a full list of the of all the relevant non-slotted passives in order of importance so this is just a general guideline you don't have to follow it by heart you don't really have to max out one passive before moving on to the next like what i do is i i try to spread it out like for example i don't max out uh i, I don't max out tireless discipline first before precision even though i think it's more important so yeah it's just a rough guideline on how you should allocate your points oh and also make sure you try to try to max out your slotted passes first before you max your non-slotted passes because yeah slotted passes are usually more powerful so that's just a little reminder and now I'll be going through the raid CP. I have Bastion, Survival Instincts, Juggernaut, and Rejuvenation. In order of importance again. So Bastion is obviously very important for, for Maxalt. Definitely first priority. Survival Instincts is very useful because uh, it pretty much gives you like a 25% cost reduction to all these abilities uh like status effects will almost always be up on you so this has a very high uptime you will probably get nerfed soon 
So I'll, I'll be giving some alternatives later on. Next up is Juggernaut, even more, uh, even more resistance. You really need a lot of resistance this patch. Everyone is doing so much damage. And finally, a uh, rejuvenation for the, for, for the sustain. So uh, some alternatives you can run. The first one is Arcane Alacrity. This is I think this is what Malcolm uses. It's an EU Maxog solo player as well. He uses he uses it over Survival Instinct. It gives more cost reduction for your dodge roll compared to Survival Instincts. But for now, I still think Survival Instincts is better, especially if you if you are like me, you block a lot. It also affects your break free and your in your sprint. But uh, if Survival Instincts get nerfed, which I think I, I think it will get nerfed soon. You can swap uh you can swap this out for arcane alacrity. Another alternative you can run is strategic reserve. I think this is very nice to use uh together with overload. Like because when you're using overload, you don't you tend to like stock stock your ultimate up a lot before before unleashing your overload. So having this like having this passive will give you a lot of passive HP regen. And it synergizes well as well because overload is a damage uh, ultimate. So when you don't need the damage, you keep your ultimate and get extra regen. And once you need the damage, you just activate overload. Very simple. So very, very well-rounded ultimate. I kind of wish I have the slot for it. But I think rejuvenation is still better. Get more, uh, get more recovery. And I think that's all for the started passives don't really have any other alternatives so let's move on oh yeah there's one more uh peace of mind but i think this is just an inferior version of <laughs> rejuvenation so i i would still prefer this okay so for the here's the list of the of all the relevant non slotted passives in order of importance again so you guys can copy it down and Use it as a rough guideline on how to how to allocate the points. Oh yeah, and this is uh, by the way for for the red CP. This is just my personal preference. Like for example, the reason why I put Tireless Guardian as the third rank is because I block a lot. I block with all my almost all my attacks, so this benefits me a lot. But if you're the type of player that tends to roll a lot compared to dot compared to block. You don't really need to put points into this first. You can focus on the other passives. And lastly, for the green CP, this is probably like the least important tree. Most of the passives here are like for role playing, but there are still uh, there are still a few good passives. So, I think there are four. Yeah, there are four passives that are useful for PvP. Uh, Steed's blessing, which increases your movement speed out of combat. And then you have Gifted Rider and War Mount, which is very good for getting around Serial Deal. And you also have Rational, which is good for keeping your foot buff up. I think these are the only four passives that that are relevant in PvP. I'm not using War Mount because I already have Max Stem. I don't feel like I need more. I don't feel like I need the points in this uh in this passive. And I think there are also a few non-slotted passives uh, which are very good. Yeah, break fall is probably the most useful one. Helps a lot in tower fights. Sometimes you accidentally fall off. This will most likely save you quite a few times. State fast enchantment also works nicely. You don't have to recharge as much. And I think that's pretty much all, all of it. There isn't really any other like important passives you need. So that's all for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. As usual, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. The build is also in the description. Oh, and one more update. Uh, I started a Twitch channel a few months ago. If you guys do not know yet, I stream once a week, usually on the weekends or Fridays. Right now, I'm very busy in real life. I'm only free on the weekends. So I most likely won't have the time to do much 1VX videos anymore. I'll probably only do... I'll probably only make a 1VX video if I get a lot of really good clips, not just like normal 1VXs. So for now, I will stick to streaming on Twitch as my as my main content. So my channel link is in the description. Feel free to check it out if you have time. 
And that being said, I will see you guys in the next video or the next stream.